we've all heard the statistic, they're definitely so sobering. One in eight women will develop breast cancer in her lifetime, and many of us know someone who's on this journey right now. You're right about that. Our next guest is not only a survivor of breast cancer, she's also a scientist and author with important information to share and a message of hope. Kristen Sauerhoff is here with her book, All the Wiser, Surviving Breast Cancer Through Knowledge. And I have to say, Kristen, your book is on my bedside table at home. I'm enjoying very much reading your story because your approach really is one of education. It is. Thank you very much, and thank you for, for having me here today. It's, it's so important for me to get the message out to women. Uh, one of the reasons I wrote the book was because I felt that there were a lot of reference books out there, a lot of books with a lot of really detailed medical information. And then there were a lot of books that were about women's stories going through. But very few for me that actually translated the medical information in a, in a way that was not going to be intimidating to women. Mm -hmm. right. so. Why don't you, for those who have not read the book, tell us a little bit about your story and your journey. Sure. In, in June of 2009, I was diagnosed with invasive breast cancer. I was 41 at the time and had no family history whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So it came as a total shock. It was found during just a routine mammogram and immediately went in for a lumpectomy. Uh, unfortunately, the margins were not clear. They didn't, were not able to get all of the cancer, so they went back in for a second time. And during the second time, they took quite a bit more and found um, some, another form of cancer in the breast the second time. So at that time, they said, let's just go ahead and start chemo, and we'll decide what we want to do later on. So I started chemo in August through November of 2009. Mm -hmm. And then in February of 2010, opted to have a double mastectomy with reconstruction. And so it's been quite a lengthy journey. It on has. So many it levels. Has. And you weave that, the, the story of all the twists and turns, the kind of the mysteries and even the humorous parts <laughs> along the way that you've had. How were you able to construct your story that way? Is that just a part of your personality? Well, I think so. You know, starting the blog was somebody's idea because, of course, at the beginning after diagnosis, we get lots of phone calls, right? And a lot of people, wonderful people, wanting to know how everything is going. So someone suggested writing the blog. And my original intent was just to use the blog entries in the book. But as I did that, I realized that there was more. You know, I didn't always put everything in the blog. I didn't put, always put all the details or all the emotions that I was going through at the time. Mm -hmm. So that's how, so I followed then up each blog entry with what I called a reflection, which kind of filled in the details and, and helped add some information. And then at each point, I kept writing down, okay, what questions did I have during this time? And then that's where the back half of the book is all of the medical information. Mm -hmm. There's so much that is a part of this. You know, you're talking about all the physical changes that are happening, the the effect on the family, you know, the emotional, and you're a mom, yes. and so I've got to think that that weighed very heavily Absolutely, on this whole thing happening to you and impacting your family. Absolutely. The, the first month after being diagnosed, I never told my husband this, and uh, I have since then, but uh, I found out he was feeling the same way. The first month after being diagnosed, I, all I was thinking of is... Scared. What are we going to do with the kids mm. when I die? Oh. You know, because in the beginning, that's what you think. You know, that's what you hear about. And Worst case scenario. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. So that was for the, for the first month. That was really what I was thinking. But then I really got on with it and realized, okay, you know, and so many people were so wonderful in coming up to me with their survivor stories, mm -hmm. you know, and that helped so much. So that's then I great, realized, you know, yeah. I'm not this is not going to kill me. So now I just have to get on with this. I have to get through chemo. I have to get through the surgeries and I have to get on the other side. Right. And that's determination the great, took you over. You know, the great part about the Komen Foundation, and I know that you have a signing coming up, is that there are so many survivors. Yes. And there's so many stories that are there to inspire and encourage you when you're going through Absolutely. all of those different stages of treatment from the diagnosis through the surgeries, the chemo. Um, is that what you're hoping your book will speak to those women who maybe are newly diagnosed and who need that? Absolutely. I think there are two, you know, I did not set out to write the book with a message in mind. It, I was more just documenting my journey and, like I said, wanting to try and translate some complicated information for women. But after writing it, I think that there are a couple of messages that I really wanted women to know. And one is that we are all stronger than we think we are. You know, I never would have guessed that I would have been able to go through everything that I've been through. So I think that we are, we all have that strength inside of us. And then the second thing, which I think is even more important, is for women that are going through this right now, 
they need to understand that they will feel normal again. Mm -hmm. I am two years out now, almost two years, and I'm happy to say I feel completely normal. And so it's, that's, I think, an important message because there was a time when I had to stop taking the stairs at work and take the elevator. Right. And I, I never thought I'd be able to take the stairs again. You know, I felt that that was going to be a permanent little change things, for me. right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. So I celebrated that day that I walked down the stairs re or up and down, and the whole day I didn't use the elevator. Oh, and that's, that memory sticks in my mind. So women will feel normal again. So people will get the opportunity to meet with you, to yes. get your book, to have you sign it. And you've got something coming up on the 28th of June. Can you tell us about it? Yes, I do. The Susan G. Komen Foundation of Southwest Michigan has been kind enough to invite me to have an event in their Kalamazoo office uh, at 4 o'clock. And we are going to start with a reading and then finish up with a signing. And books will be available at the event uh, as well as on Amazon right now. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, that is fantastic. And uh, do you have any words for uh, your husband, your family? They, your husband just seems like a champ. <laughs> Goodness, that's um, that's the understatement of the century. <laughs> I would say, you know, we're, we're very fortunate. My husband stays home with the kids, and mm -hmm. that that meant. A, the world because life really didn't change a whole lot for them. My husband does the cooking. He, in fact, he doesn't let me in the kitchen to cook, which is probably <laughs> a good thing. So that continued on and uh, they were wonderful. We would read books up in bed before bedtime. I would read to them. So the support that I got from them, I just, I can't even tell you. And my kids, we were very open with them from the very beginning and they would talk about it with their friends at school. So I knew that they were dealing with it well. And uh, they were incredibly supportive. Just they always knew when I needed a hug, mm -hmm. and came up and gave me a hug. So thank you for asking because that was a very important part. Well, Kristen, thank you for sharing your story with everyone in West Michigan and giving them an opportunity to uh, be a part of it too. Thank They're you on so their much. journey right now, I'm sure. Yeah, absolutely, and it will get better. Yeah, it you'll will get better. Help more people than you ever know. I certainly hope so. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're we'll welcome. Be right back.